Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and the Game Developer Conference is ongoing. Now yesterday, NVIDIA announced a number of uh, new game development SDKs. We're going to jump in and take a look at what their announcements are in this particular video. And I'm going to see if you can see the theme between all of these announcements. I sure did. Uh, so this is the NVIDIA technical blog about it. They're breaking down their new path tracing technology and other technologies that they are releasing. A lot of these also came with new SDKs. We'll get to those details in just a minute. Now the first thing that they're talking about here is the D DLSS3. And now DLSS stands for Deep Learning Super Sampling. It's basically a way of uh, making a high resolution image out of a lower con and computationally required image by using a bunch of AI magic. Well, what they're adding, adding into here now is also the ability to actually create new frames in between. So you're kind of using AI to create a, in like almost like a between a, a, an interpolation uh, between frames of graphics. And uh, one of the things about this, though, DLSS3 is for the Ada Lovelace architecture. For those of you not in the know, Ada Lovelace is the 40 series GPU. So that means if you have a 30 series GPU, you can beep the off. So I'm um, not really that impressed by that. So that that's a little disappointing. Almost all their announcements here today. Unfortunately, you're going to see Ada Lovelace a lot through here. Um, so that's that's a little bit unfortunate. So this DLSS3 stuff, yeah, so if you got a 4080 GPU, you're happy. Everybody else, not so much. Uh, but it is really cool technology. Between uh, DLSS and FSR, uh, probably the most consequential set of... Um, impact for frame rates and image quality that we have seen yet. The, the Steam Deck, for example, really shines with FSR. It makes it kind of hit be above its own weight. Um, there's a number of games being announced with DLSS3 here, including Plague Tale Requiem, Portal with RTX, and Cyberpunk 2077. But again, this is all only going to matter if you have a 40 series GPU. Now, on the bright side, uh, there is this Streamline 2.0 SDK, which has one of the most pompous things I have ever seen in my life. And we'll get back to that in just a second. But Streamline basically allows you to use DLSS and the other um, super scaling solutions that are out there for resolution upscaling. Um, so there is this new frame generation plugin coming to Unreal Engine in the next release. Uh, DLSS 3 is also going to be an Unreal Engine 5.2, which I believe is going to be announced on either Wednesday or Thursday. So do stay tuned for that announcement. Uh, so yeah, if you're one of those people out there with a 40 series GPU, this one could be interesting when it finally trickles down. And like I said, they've already got 28 games working on it. So this one is going to have a direct impact for those people with those particular GPUs. Next up, we've got real-time path tracing. Now you may be going, okay, what is path tracing versus ray tracing? And I'm not going to get into a whole lot of detail of that. I'm going to give you a TLDR version, which is good enough, but not particularly accurate. Ray tracing is a way of bouncing lights around the scene, see what makes it back to the camera, and that's how you can render shadows, etc. Now, the results it gives you aren't always perfect, especially when you've got um, sort of global illumination systems you want to render caustics, etc. And that's where path tracing comes in. It's basically a different ray tracing algorithm that handles the way light bounces different, the way it handles the way it deals with surfaces a little bit differently. Basically, you can really think of path tracing as ray tracing, just uh, a little bit more computationally intensive. So in other words, it takes more frames or more um, processing power to make it work, but it gives you better or more realistic results. So that's my simple, simple uh, version of what path tracing is all about. And they've replaced, they've released this path tracing SDK. So the NVIDIA RTX path tracing SDK is now available. We'll get that in just a moment, uh, which is very cool. And this is going to come to every single NVIDIA GPU ever created. Uh, no, no, it's ADA only as well. Noticing a theme here yet? Uh, so building high quality photo modes for RT capable GPUs or real time ultra quality modes that take advantage of the ADA Lovelace architecture. Great job supporting your old hardware there at NVIDIA. This feels like a marketing scam. And the part that really burns me about this is I remember back when the RTX was announced with the 1080 series. And I don't think a 1080 series with game uh, GPU was ever actually capable of running any of these things. It always ended up being two or three generations down the road. So if you're thinking about buying a 40 series uh, card for things like path tracing and so on, you're a sucker. It's going to be the 50 series that can actually take advantage of this stuff. So even the current gen is kind of getting screwed by all of these announcements, except, of course, the DL 
LSS free, which is going to work immediately, which is nice. So again, there is this new path tracing SDK. On top of that, they've also got something called the OMM SDK. Uh, this is for opacity micro maps, which again, work on all of their heart. No, no, add it only. <laughs> okay. So we'll get back to that one in just a second. But again, path tracing is definitely going to be a thing of the future. And one of the main things, again, about... Um, path tracing is for things like caustics. So you can see ray trace depth of field caustics in effect and how it looks there. It's going to give you, again, nicer, more accurate, realistic lighting uh, if you have the, the capability to run it. So in, machines are really just kind of coming into being able to do RTX stuff now. And this path tracing stuff is going to be Again, a bit more intensive. And according to NVIDIA, you can only do it on their most great, latest and greatest hardware, it seems. Now, the one thing that they have released that I do think is probably the most universally useful, and this is the kind of thing that, well, AMD does it all the time. It's an open source um, solution that should be um, in specific to the, the, the library being used behind the scenes. So this is a single integration uh, framework for doing these uh, super resolution technologies. So here again is one of the pettiest things I've ever seen as well. So this is a layer over top of, so you got your game, you would use this streamline SDK here, and then you've got things like the NVIDIA stuff. So DLSS is in there, super scaling, real-time denoisers are all plugged in here. And then of course you've got Intel's solution here, so the Z super sampling, right? So what is the, the biggest one you can think of in this space? So if it's not DLSS, if S, it's FSR, that's the AMD solution, or what you would call it is hardware vendor number three, super resolution SDK. Stop being such petty little bitches. This is pathetic, okay? I, I'm sorry, I'm in a little bit of a anti-NVIDIA after this announcement. But yeah, uh, it is an SDK for making it kind of sitting over top of all of these different technologies. And that's a good move. It is nice to see it being a little bit on the hardware independent side. So you can take advantage of this. And then, you know, as these new technologies come online, they will be supported. So Streamline SDK is available on GitHub. Uh, the other one, again, is the NVIDIA RTX Path Tracing SDK. I gave you my, again, very short breakdown, technically accurate-ish sort of uh, explanation of why path tracing is the next generation of ray tracing. Um, this is an SDK to enable path tracing in your own uh, application. Uh, it is available right now. Once again, if you do click through to it, however, you will find the requirements. If you click down here, what hardware does this work on? You will see it is designed to leverage the power and feature set of the latest NVIDIA ADA series GPUs. Although I will say at the same time, uh, this wording is ambiguous. I don't know if the path tracing SDK will actually work on a previous gen. And NVIDIA actually did this in the past. They locked, um, you know, RTX to this very certain hardware and then ended up, oh, look, magically, it will work on our old stuff. And this happens again and again and again with NVIDIA. So you got to expect Gen 2 of this SDK. It'll probably work on 20 series and 30 series cards or whatever. Uh, but yeah, and then the one other technology here is the NVIDIA Micro Mesh. Uh, this is a graphics primitive for extreme geometry. Think of this thing like Nanite, super high def def uh, definition meshes. It's a way of more or less encoding more information into the mesh. So you see here, sample micro mesh composed of 60 thousand individual micro meshes on the left half expanded to two million micro triangles on the right half uh, this consumes around one byte per micro triangle so if you you know you want to take nanite and, and supercharge it uh, this is basically a data structure for it oh and look it works on nvidia 40 series gpus all right so ladies and gentlemen that is nvidia's announcements at gdc uh 2023. Uh, it's some really cool stuff. Don't get me wrong. A DLSS3, uh, it's, I, I don't know if that frame interpolation stuff uh, is really that special. I don't know if it, it's a good idea or not. Um, it's cool uh, for sure. Uh, but DLSS and FSR have been game changers in the industry. So it is nice to see them moving forward. Having it locked to add a series cards just burns me. Uh, path tracing, again, we're starting to see it more and more in the, we started seeing it really in offline renderers, things like, um, 
you know, Blender or Maya based renderers, that kind of stuff. Uh, but it is coming to the world of real time graphics. So the SDK is nice. Again, uh, probably not going to be immediately usable, even if you have a 4090 series path tracing, uh, like there's a new Cyberpunk RT Ultimate or something. And from what I've heard, it will run around 30 to 40 frames per second with it enabled. So on a 4090 series card. So this is the kind of thing that you're probably going to see more in the next generation, like what we saw with the ray tracing in the past. So it took two or three generations of NVIDIA hardware before this stuff became mainstream. Uh, but this is, of course, the beginning of it. So the RTX path tracing SDK is available and integrations are coming to other game engines out there. And then we've got... Um, the, the, the caustics branches that are available again that take advantage of path tracing gives you just better more realistic rendering and you got the micro mesh technology so does something like the nanite structures that unreal engine obviously did it's just for obviously uh nvidia hardware only so let me know what, what you think and am i being unfair to nvidia for the fact that they're locking all of their new releases under to their newest hardware only or do you agree with me that there's just something a little off-putting about this year's announcements so let me know what you think talk to you all later goodbye